For this next one, I'll take a look at closed loop asynchronous optimization of expensive functions. So like I was talking about uh, in batch optimization versus asynchronous optimization, uh, it's summarized in this figure here where uh, you've got um, a batch of three. Um, so in your first iteration, you do one, two, three experiments. And if uh, your first experiment happens to finish well before your other experiments finish, uh, essentially that is left idle. Uh, that worker is left idle. The resources are being unutilized. And a way to get around that is to do asynchronous optimization, where as soon as a worker is available, you immediately use it, uh, you assign a next experiment to run on that worker. Um, and so you reduce the amount of, uh, you reduce the idle time uh, for each of each of the workers there. Oh, in this notebook, we've got the uh, Raytune framework and we have Axe, which integrates with some of these different scheduling frameworks and distributed training frameworks. So uh, a brief summary of Raytune, it's a scalable framework for hyperparameter tuning and it provides many state-of-the-art hyperparameter tuning algorithms. For example, Dragonfly, Optuna, um, Axe, and uh, a few others. Uh, Hebo is another one. Uh, and it uses this actor API to provide this asynchronous parallel and distributed execution. So let's jump in here. We're going to import uh, some things from the Ray uh, package, uh, the tune module, a report module, and uh, or report function and the act search class. We'll also grab some of our potting helpers, our act client from the service API, uh, and the same helper functions uh, that we had in the previous notebook with uh, convolutional neural network tuning. Uh, we'll initialize our axe client uh, and uh, set up our experiment as normal. Um, with the two uh, CNN uh, and MNIST hyperparameters, the learning rate and the momentum, uh, or rather the uh, CNN parameters used um, to optimize uh, on the MNIST data set. We'll load the MNIST data set, um, preload it, and we'll uh, again, create our uh, evaluate function, our objective function, um, which does the training and the instantiation of the uh, network, um, as well as uh, something new here where we're using the report function from Raytune uh, to report our mean accuracy as this float value um, that's coming from the evaluate function. And then we use Raytune's Axe Search class uh, and pass in our instantiated Axe client into that. Uh, from there, we can set uh, a concurrency limiter, uh, the maximum number of jobs that are allowed to occur concurrently. Um, and we input the algorithm and return it. So it essentially just changes uh, that, that algorithm. Um, and uh, changes its state in some way. And then we run it using our, we use tune.run with our evaluation function, the number of samples, our search algorithm, and uh, whether or not we want, uh, or the level of verb verbosity that we want. Um, so you can see it's uh, generating trials and uh, completing them. Uh, all the way up to our, our 30th trial. And so as it's running this optimization, as soon as one worker is available, uh, it the Axe client is generating a new suggestion for an experiment to run and assigning that suggestion to the available worker. We can then use our instantiated Axe client, which has now been modified uh, through the search 
um, and get the best parameters, the means and uh, covariances uh, like before, as well as uh, do some of the visualization that we had before, uh, such as the, uh, the mean, the standard deviation uh, in the Gaussian process model and the optimization trace. So that's the axe search uh, class uh, leveraging the adaptive experimentation platform via the Raytune platform. And to uh, go over um, an example of comparing the efficiency of synchronous optimization versus asynchronous optimization. Uh, in this case, um, they're showing that uh, in all cases that the asynchronous optimization performs uh, as well as or better than the synchronous um, optimization op option uh, in terms of the total runtime required. Again, uh, so due to two things, first off, that uh, you've uh, effectively eliminated the idle time of your workers that are running the experiments, um, as well as uh, when you suggest a new experiment, you're more likely to have had more data at any given point, um, which is sort of a secondary benefit of reducing that idle time. 